Hey everybody, welcome to Garden Sound. Since my last cooking video was so much fun to make, I decided I'm going to keep with this theme. And today I'm going to be both reviewing Tipper's new EP, Lattice, as well as cooking some sort of a chorizo pasta uh, dish. Not exactly sure what to call it. It's almost like a vegetarian carbonara, but without ham or a lot of different vegetables. But it's a really decent pasta dish that's easy to make. The ingredients we're going to use here are garlic, onions, some sort of vegetarian chorizo. Uh, we're also going to need some tomatoes and a couple of different spices, paprika, salt, and fresh cracked pepper. So for those of you who don't know, Tipper came out with a new EP. It's called Lattice. It's pretty decent. I'm not exactly impressed with this EP. I have liked almost every release he's put out. I was a little bit disappointed with last year's EP. He released an EP in January called Flunked. And I think this continues a what I'm considering downward trend for Tipper. It's not necessarily that it's bad in terms of sound quality. And in fact, the sound quality is what you would expect from Tipper. It's ace. I mean, the mix and master is almost perfect. I would argue, however, that this one sounds a bit more squeezed than his last releases. Going for loudness instead of clarity of sound, which I am a bit disappointed with. Tipper used to be the hallmark, the epitome of clean sounding loudness. And now it's just a bit noisy. I think this is because there's a current market trend with distortion. Um, distortion seems to be the thing in a bunch of different types of music. We're also going to be using um, a stock ingredient, and this is my favorite instant mac and cheese. It is Annie's. So yeah, there's a heavy use of distortion on this EP, uh, be it pop with Foster the People's new album, be it hip hop with all of the SoundCloud rappers that you hear, distortion is a very big thing in their bass lines, or be it IDM and Glitch Hop with the newer releases from Mr. Bill, Frequent, etc. Going back to the EP, I find that this struggles a lot with having interesting compositional form and having interesting sound design. Tipper, again, is known for very interesting sound design, and I'd like to harken back to It's Like, which was what I consider his last interesting release. That EP has excellent form. Everything has a clearly defined section. This one relies more on a build form, where you have an ostinato or a bass line that repeats over and over again. What this does is it really just fatigues my ears. By the time I get to the third track, I'm not even sure whether or not I'm listening to something new. By the time you get to the third track, like I said before, your ears are so fatigued that you're just sick of hearing all the distortion. It's a different type of distortion than what we're used to hearing from Tipper. It used to be an effect, however, this seems to be the vehicle for the majority of his tracks. And as I've stated before, they get pretty repetitive quickly. And the reason for that is there's not a whole lot of variation in form, there's not a whole lot of variation in sound design. Again, two things that Tipper is really known for, creating a catchy flow and also having excellent sound design. Here you can see me pouring the Annie's into the water. You want to let this cook for almost exactly five minutes. That's like the golden amount of time for Annie's to cook. So I've set my timer there and I feel like it's probably a good idea to throw in the rest of the ingredients into my pan along with paprika, salt, fresh cracked pepper. One of the big golden rules of cooking is if things aren't burning, leave them alone. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and grind my coffee for tomorrow. <laughs> so it really makes me wonder why this came out in the way that it did. It's still a solid 3 out of 5. It's not garbage by any means and it's better than anything you're going to hear on the radio. However, it is boring. I would put Bruno Mars above this in terms of interesting content. The composition of these tracks is bland and boring. The sound design is somewhat stale and gets old after a while. It's just not something I can listen to for 20 minutes. And by the time you get to the fourth track, which I would argue is a completely necessary track, you are given a reprieve from the constant distorted bass kick combo that has become almost omnipresent throughout this entire release. And then the fourth track hits you with a very slow moving, again, boring compositional form. So yeah, it's Tipper. It's definitely Tipper. It definitely sounds like Tipper. Oh, another pro tip for cooking. Don't use milk in boxed mac and cheese. Use heavy cream. It's less healthy, but it makes things just a ton more tasty. It definitely sounds like Tipper but it's boring, which is not what I would consider Tipper. If we harken back to Tipper's old releases like Shatterbox or Puzzle Dust or It's Like, there are clearly defined forms. There's breakdowns within the songs where we're not constantly hit over the head with the same bass ostinato. These tracks have some breakdowns, but that bass ostinato prevails and we're not really given a chance to breathe. This is a pretty unforgivable compositional flaw because it doesn't provide the audience with any space. This thing took me probably about 20 minutes to make. Um, there's not a whole ton of bad things for you in this particular recipe. It's not the greatest thing for you. You're not going to lose any weight by eating this, but it is delicious. Definitely better than a Big Mac. Go ahead and treat yourself to some of this during a lunch break if you've got the time for it. If you like this format, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Not sure if I'll continue doing this. I think it's interesting. 
Um, so just let me know. This is just my informed opinion. If you disagree with me, you can let me know in the comments down below and let's have a discussion about it.